Hi, I'm Linda Fenstermaker. I'm the West Coast uh, sales representative uh, here at Osborne, and we're located in Mount Vernon, Washington. And we are a small scale um, seed distributor company, and we work with a lot of uh, small to medium scale commercial farmers um, through sales on our website and catalog. And one of our specialties is radicchio. So um, I'm gonna show you today our radicchio trial, which is this year is right here. We do extensive trials here in the Pacific Northwest and also with partner farms across the country and in Canada. So um, we're just always trying to find the most uh, unique or adaptive or um, uniform quality seed that we can. And radicchio is one of those ones that we do trial every single year because there's always new varieties coming out, um, whether they're improved hybrids over some of the older OPs or new and interesting see, uh, varieties that we haven't seen before in the US. Um, and also just working with new um, breeder companies. So we have a lot of different um, reasons to be trialing and with radicchio where it's very slot sensitive, trialing every year is a really important thing to be doing. So this year our trial was seeded in late June and transplanted out um, in late July. And it, as you can see, it's still heading up. Um, we have a variety of, or a huge range of different maturing dates, um, mainly trialing for fall and winter slots. Um, there's a lot of interest, especially in the Northwest where the winters are more mild for overwintered um, and really winter hardy radicchio varieties to be selling in the dead of winter when there's not much else to be selling. And especially for a leafy green to be able to harvest that late, that's really important for a lot of our farmers. So that's something we're always trialing for as well as the late maturing varieties. Um, so some of them aren't quite ready. Um, there are a few that are, are getting to be nice heads. Um, so I'm here with Tim Terpstra, who's our trial manager and uh, he's the one that did all the work to get this ready. So I'm gonna let him say a few words. Well, first of all, you helped plant it, which I appreciate. Oh, so. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we have more than 50 varieties here um, organized by type, more or less. And um, we had better success on some than others on, in terms of germination, but um, I think we have a good, we're gonna have a good overall look at it um of 600 feet going all the way back and um yeah we're keeping it clean and seeing what happens to it we love radicchio so much that we put it on the cover of our catalog for 2020 so this is the catalog that has been out and our new one is coming out um in november so but we put in kind of a a nice display of all the different types that we carry um and we also put together because there's such growing interest in radicchio and lots of people that are growing it that have never grown it before we put together this um, kind of growing slot chart to try to help people understand a little more of how to successfully grow radicchio um, as many people know it can be challenging but very rewarding when you get it right so we have our slots here that are by season. Um, and then the dates of maturity, you can also kind of tell the later maturing ones are more for your fall and winter slot and the earlier maturing ones are more for your um, spring and summer slot. So it's like onions where they're slotted because they're day length and temperature sensitive. So you need to make sure you have the right ones for the right growing season. Otherwise they'll bolt or they won't head up um, and it'll be frustrating. We also now have at least one of every type of radicchio that you can, that's available. So we have your classic Kyoja, we have Costel Franco, we have uh, Lucia, we have 
even some of the tardivo types that you uh, force either in the field or outdoors. So, and then of course the Rosalba, which is the pink specialty one that's become a pretty big favorite of growers here in the US. So here we have Cereo, which is one of our um, main season Kyoja types that has been very popular. It's really consistent and it um, is more adaptable. So you can grow it a little more out of slot than some of the other varieties. So we have it in trial against um, three other Kyojas for the same days and maturity and same slotting from um, three different companies. So we'll be looking at the uniformity of um, size and shape. We'll be looking at the color, the texture, flavor. We'll be looking at the plant habit, the frame size, um, and like and how it performs with different heat and cool conditions. Um, looking at the stem length, core length for bolting and things like that. So we'll, these are still a couple of weeks off, but that's kind of what we'll be looking for when we do our evaluation. And if we liked something better than Cereo, then we could potentially, um, we would put it in other locations to see how it performs and then eventually add it to our catalog as a substitute or a replacement potentially for Cereo. So a lot of our trial results end up in our catalog there may be a couple year delay depending on if the seed's commercially available or if um, we're still trialing and gathering information before we want to commit it to the catalog. This plot is Rubro, which is one we brought in this past year. It's um, one of the latest maturing varieties on the market uh, for a red Kyoja. So it goes deep into the winter um, and will withstand many frosts and freezes up to like 25 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Um, and as you can see, the frame size is much larger than on cereal back there, which isn't very cold hardy. I mean, it'll withstand frost, but it's not like this that's bred for deep winter growing. So the frame size will help protect the head um, as well as just give it more girth to it. Um, and this one has been, is a really nice uniform head and we've been really excited with the results of it um, and customer feedback has been really great on it. Um, and it is a hybrid, so that's an added bonus as well. So this is Galileo, which is a new one for this year. Um, it's a hybrid, it's really uniform really nice like lighter texture and flavor is less bitter than some of the other red types um, and it's heading up very nicely it's still a little bit early but there's a few heads in here that are fairly well uh, forming so i'm just kind of checking for tightness this one seems pretty good not quite ready yet but still to get bigger than this but this is just kind of a nice example really beautiful internals that classic speckled look so this is galileo the, in this trial we have it marked out by variety so we have blocks of all of the different varieties of that type um, so it was started with kyoja and then treviso lucia then costo franco so we're in the specialty Costa Franco area now. This is Lucrezia, which is a later maturing, late fall, early winter Costa Franco type. Bigger plant habit for winter durability. Fenice, which is the earlier maturing Costa Franco, 
Um, it's a really beautiful kind of open uh, floret look to it. And I'm just trying to find one that's um, a little bit more tight. For these ones, because they're open at the top, you kind of have to feel the base for ones that are ready. Um, peel back some of the layers. So because it hasn't really been that cold here yet, um, some of the classic speckling hasn't quite showed up, but it's, it will show up as the nights get cooler. So let's see what it looks like inside. But yeah, that really beautiful buttery yellow interior and more of the speckling is in here. This is the famed Rosalba, but as you can see, it's just green. It's not pink yet. And the pink coloration doesn't come on until its maturity, um, until later in its maturity when the weather has gotten much cooler. So you can kind of see some of the stems on the outer leaves are starting to turn pink, but yeah, so it, it needs that cold frost to turn to that pink color um, and and to start heading up. It's one of the later maturing varieties at 130 days. So it, it generally in our trials doesn't come to maturity till late November or December. So it's a nice one for later in your season. So this is Leonardo, which is a hybrid Kyoja um, that is really adaptable to be planted in um, more slots than some of our other varieties. So you can do it in mild summers or in the fall and into winter. Um, it's a really nice uniform head. You get a lot of yield out of your field. It's kind of the standard Kyoja for U.S. production and it, it still has good flavor and just really nice classic look with the wide white and the dark burgundy coloration. So this is a really nice one. We try to have um, at least a few different slotting options for each type of radicchio. There's a few that we haven't. Um, we just have the kind of fall slot, but we try to have an early, a uh, mid and a late maturing variety of each type. I love radicchio so much that I'll just eat it raw right out of the field. Mmm. So good.